Hi everybody! Welcome back to Science Story Time. Miss Julie here. Today we are going to read chapters 3, 4, and 5 from Andrew Lost on the Dog by J.C. Greenberg. Um, the publisher for this book is um, Random House. Last week, where we left off, Andrew was having some major difficulties. His atom sucker was going haywire, and the last thing he heard was a super loud shloop. Well, let's dive in and find out what's happened, and then we'll do some science. Need the glass. Yowzers! Andrew yelled. It was dark. A cool wind was blowing. In the wind, there were little chunks of stuff. They smacked into Andrew as they flew by. Where am I? Andrew thought. Ahead of him, Andrew could see a far away dot of light. Behind him was an even darker darkness. Andrew's head felt weird and heavy. I know what this feeling is, Andrew thought. I'm hanging upside down, like a bat in a cave. Andrew tried to move his feet, but they were stuck. In goo. The wind was so strong it was sucking him through the goo, back into the darker darkness. Andrew reached out for something to hold on to. Strange sticky ropes were hanging down all around him. He grabbed one. Judy! Andrew yelled. Me! Dark, 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 Drude, said Thud. Afraid of dark. Andrew pulled Thud out of his pocket. It was good to see Thud's bright screen even though there was a frown on it. The wind slowed down. A moment later, it whipped up again. But this time, the wind was hot and damp, and going the other way. It pushed Andrew towards the dot of light. Can you tell me where we are, Thud? asked Andrew, holding on tight to a rope. Thud's buttons were blinking yellow. Thud was upset. Meep! Harley! Thud announced. You mean we're on the dog? asked Andrew. Meep! In Harley, said Thud. In Harley's nose. Holy moly, said Andrew. We must be really small. Meep! I show you, said Thud. Thud's face disappeared from his screen. In its place appeared a picture of Andrew. The picture began to shrink. First it shrank to the size of a pencil eraser then to a dot, then to nothing. Andrew felt a little dizzy. Partly, it was from being upside down, but mostly, it was from thinking about how small he was. Andrew slipped Thud back into his pants pocket. Grab the cord that holds my keys, Thud, said Andrew. Wrap it around yourself so you won't fall out. Me, okie dokie, said Thud. Then Andrew reached for his mini flashlight. He always attached it to his belt loop. Andrew unhooked the flashlight and turned it on. The flashlight's bright yellow beam sliced through the darkness of the, uh, of the nose cave. It was a huge place. The roof of the nose was as wrinkled as a messy bed sheet. Zillions of gooey ropes hung down from the folds. And here, I will show you this picture. You can see Andrew upside down, hanging on to the gooey ropes. The bottom of the nose was far below. It looked gooey down there, too. Suddenly, the sides of the nose case started moving in and out real quickly. The dog breath wind came in short little gusts. Meep! Harley smells something, said Thud. Dog nose smell things a million times better than human nose. Harley can find place where Drood walked four days ago. Can find Drood buried under snow. Can tell if Drood happy or sad by how Drood smell. I know Uncle Al programmed you to tell me everything you know about everything, said Andrew. But right now, we've got to concentrate on finding Judy. Just then, Harley gave a big, gusty sniff. <clears throat> Chapter 4, A Sticky Situation Ick! came a voice in the darkness. 
Judy, Andrew shouted. Andrew, Judy shouted back. Andrew turned off his flashlight and snapped it back onto his belt loop. He grabbed the sticky ropes with both hands and started pulling himself through the goo towards Judy's voice. Ouch, Judy yelled. Oof, Andrew hollered. Judy and Andrew had clunked heads. Andrew, Judy gasped. First, I land on a gigantic blade of grass. Then Harley's nose hovers over me like a humongous spaceship. Next, he's sniffing me up. Now, because of you and your silly atom sucker, I'm soaked in nose goo. Meep, nose goo called mucus, said Thud. Gooey mucus good. If nose not gooey, nose not smell. Tiny pieces come off everything that has smell. Thud pointed to a picture on his face screen. And I will show you the picture. This is Thud's face screen. And you can see all the different particles that Thud's talking about that the nose can detect. Tiny particles stick to gooey nose cells, Thud said. Look! Thud pointed to a new picture on his face screen. So this is the new picture that showed up on his face screen. And you can see the nose hairs in there. And they have detector cells that we're going to actually talk about a little when we get to the science part. And that's what's going to detect the smell. Nose cells send message to dog brain. Dead squirrel, yummy. No dog, nasty. Udi, friend. Harley find Udi because he got lots of gooey nose cells. Judy frowned. If I hear one more word about nose goo, I'll take out your batteries, thud. Just then, a huge gust of dog breath went, whipped towards the back of the nose cave. When it stopped, everything got quiet. What's going on? Judy asked. The walls of the nose cave began to quiver. Uh-oh, said Andrew. There was an explosion. Judy and Andrew were blasting through the air. Chapter 5, Ups and Downs Yow! Andrew screamed. He crashed into something rubbery. Yoof! Andrew squinted. It was very bright. The light hurt his eyes after the darkness of the nose. Thud, what happened? He asked. Neep! Harley sneeze, said Thud. Sneeze can go 100 miles an hour, fast as tornado. Andrew's eyes started to get used to the light. It looked as if they were at the mouth of an enormous cave. They were stuck to the very top of it. Suddenly, Andrew knew where they were. We're at the end of Harley's nose, said Andrew, at the top of Harley's nostril. Meep! Drood, look! Thud said. Woody's fingers! Where? asked Andrew. Meep! Down! said Thud. Way below, Judy was dangling by her fingertips from the bottom edge of Harley's nostril. Help! she screamed. I can't hold on much longer. Suddenly, a pink tidal wave curled up towards Judy. It was Harley's tongue. It was covered with gigantic bristles, like a monster hairbrush. Look out, Andrew shouted. Judy screamed. The tongue picked her up and swooped her towards Andrew. Andrew reached out to grab Judy as the tongue went by. But all Andrew got were wet tongue bristles. Then the tongue swooped back into Harley's mouth. Meep, oi, gone, cried Thud. Almost gone, a voice gasped from above. I am on top of Harley's nose. Andrew, get out of that nostril and get up here. Andrew leaned out of the nostril and looked up. Getting to the top of Harley's nose would be like climbing a craggy black cliff. Andrew tucked Thud into his back, into his back pocket and started to climb. 
The front of Harley's nose was covered with pits and cracks. Andrew used them to grab onto. Being sticky with nose goo helped. I feel like a fly walking up a wall, Andrew thought. Maybe I can use this nose goo stuff in one of my inventions. Finally, Andrew scrambled over the edge of the nose. It felt good to be somewhere flat, even if it was the top of a dog's nose. Meep! Want to see, please? said Thud. Andrew put Thud into his shirt pocket. A head was a strange sight. It looked like a blown down forest of scaly tree trunks. Oh, but it was really thousands of dog hairs all leaning in one direction. Judy was leaning against one of the hairs. On her face was a, oh, wait till I get my hands on you, look. Andrew looked over the edge of the nose cliff. This nose could really use a safety railing, he said. This is not funny, Judy said. Suddenly, everything spun to the right. Andrew was glad he was still sticky. He was too sticky to fall off the nose. Harley must be getting ready to take a nap, Judy said. She was clinging to one of the dog hairs. He always turns around and around first. Finally, Harley curled up in the shade. Harley's sigh rumbled below them like an underground train. Judy and Andrew sat down at the edge of the dog hair forest. So how do we get unshrunk? Judy asked. Well, we set the atom sucker to unshrink, said Andrew. We have eight hours from when I turned it on. What happens if we don't get back in eight hours? asked Judy. Andrew looked away. Um, well, the atom sucker might kind of explode. Okay, that was the end of chapter five. Okay, guys, science time. Let's talk about how dog noses are different from human noses. Dogs have a much better sense of smell than humans do. And there are actually a number of reasons for that. Um, we are going to try and keep things simple here. So let's start with what is contained in the nose. And that is boogers, snot, mucus. Okay, that's the gooey, icky stuff that Andrew and Judy were stuck to inside of Harley's nose. Um, mucus actually performs a number of functions. Um, the first is that it catches materials that are not supposed to enter the lungs, so it kind of acts like a filter. It also keeps your nose moist so that it doesn't hurt to breathe. Um, and mucus covers tiny little hairs that are in your nose. If we go back to this page in the book, you see we have the nose hairs that are sticking up here. This is the root of the nose hair, and here we have what are called receptor hairs. So the mucus covers the receptor hairs. And another function of mucus is that when you smell something, the, that smell has little particles and the mucus actually dissolves those particles and it allows those particles then to be detected by the receptor hairs. And then the receptor hairs send those chemical si signals to the brain. Um, this happens in both dogs and humans, but I have a picture here that will give you an idea of why dogs are able to smell so much better than we are. Here, this is, this is the number of scent receptors in a human nose. So each one of these boxes represents 1 million scent receptors. Okay, so humans have about 5 million. For a dog um, that has a short, um, a short nose and kind of like a flat face, so a bulldog or a pug, those dogs have about 125 million receptor cells. So here I actually have 125 boxes and each one of those is a million receptor cells. Now dogs that have a really good sense of smell like bloodhounds, they have up to 300 million um, receptor cells. 
And yes, here's our 300 boxes. And each one represents 1 million. So you can see that the best, the, the, the dog who is able to smell the best, I almost said the best smelling dog, but yeah, hmm. <laughs> I guess that's opinion. Um, the dog that is able to smell the best has way more scent receptors than a human does. Um, let's see. So in addition to having many more scent receptors, the section of the brain that is fed this information by a dog is actually 40 times larger than it is in a human brain, which is really interesting because dog brains overall are smaller than human brains. And yet the section of the brain that detects smell and um, tells the dog what that smell is, is actually much larger than ours. So that is the quick and easy explanation of why dogs have a better sense of smell than we do. I will leave links to articles on the blog page if you are interested in diving into more of the science involved. It's actually really interesting. And now, without further ado, let's make some dog mucus. Or slime, if you don't want to be gross. Alright, however, as always, remember to ask an adult um, before taking materials. And your adult might want to know what it is you're up to before making a big mess because this can get a little messy. Okay, if you don't have the materials that I am going to use at home, I am also going to include a link on the blog page that has alternate recipes for slime. For this recipe, you will need two bowls, and I'm using my um, spatulas for mixing, water, um, borax, and glue. And today I am going to use the clear glue because that makes your slime look more like snot. So, <laughs> um, also if you wanted to get, you know, if you wanted to have some extra fun with this, you could find some bits and pieces of things like, I don't know, if you have glitter or little pieces of sparkly things at home or something to put in your um, snot. So that it's like, oh, look, but my snot filtered out of the air. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Um, I am going to put some food coloring in this just to make it a little more fun. All right. So to begin with, I have, oh, Michael, real quick. I'm sorry. My son's here helping me. My um, measuring scale is on the counter over there. You throw that for me. Thank you. Okay. I like to use a little kitchen scale. Makes things a little bit easier. Um, so let's see. I'll turn that on. Make sure I am working in ounces here. All right. So the first part is four ounces of glue and four ounces of water. So I will add my glue. <laughs> it's making some noises here. My son's over in the corner cracking up right now. <laughs> okay, Michael. There we go. Funny, funny. All right, that's close enough to four ounces. I like to measure directly on the scale because I don't exactly want to be scraping this out of one of my um, measuring cups, but, you know, whatever. Either works. All right, now I'm going to add four ounces of water, which is also half a cup. So. There we go. And this is a step. If you are going to add your food coloring, this is the time to do it. I'm going to put one drop of green and one drop of yellow. So I can get a good lime green 
boogery look to this whole thing. Okay, so now I'm going to mix nicely with trying not to get lime green color all over my tablecloth. Which, you know, um, if you're trying to decide what color to make this, healthy mucus is actually clear. It should be clear. If you have a cold or um, suffering allergies or, you know, if you have a virus, that's when you start getting the yellow and the green mucus. So this is actually quite diseased. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So that is mixed nicely. I'm going to put that right here. And in my next bowl, I am going to add one teaspoon of borax. And this is just found in the detergent aisle at any store. It's over, you know, where laundry detergent stuff is. All right, here we go. Add more because it wasn't quite full. Okay. And now this one is going to take eight ounces of water. Which is also one cup. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now this one can take a little bit more time to dissolve. Um, if you wanted to use warmer water for the borax than you used for the glue, that would be fine. That would help get the borax to dissolve better. Okay. You want to mix until all the crystals are dissolved. And right now I still have some chunky stuff going on here. So let me show you something real quick. We'll squeeze in an extra piece of science here. The borax dissolved in water just acts like a regular liquid. The glue dissolved in water just acts like a soupier glue. It's what it feels like. It, has, it does not feel like a slime at all. Um, you know, it's just glue, watery glue. So now we're going to add the borax solution to the glue solution, and we're going to get a chemical reaction, and that is going to allow us to pick up the resulting slime. Now we're going to quickly start mixing this together. And look, you can already see that it's getting chunky in there. Okay. Now, not all of the liquid is going to get used up, and that's okay. All right. Now, at this point, see, chemical reaction acts completely different than the glue acted or the borax. And there we go. Now, this is kind of goopy still. The more you play with it, the slimier it's going to get. Um, when you are done playing with it, you should put it into a Ziploc bag because this can get mold. So um, put it in the fridge and it'll last you a couple of days. Okay? So that is it for this. This is kind of fun, guys. You should do this. <laughs> um... So this, and see, it, it does. It gets very rubbery the more you play with it. So just keep playing with it, and it'll, mm, yeah. Okay, so that is it for this week. Um, join us again next week for a few more chapters of Andrew Lost on the Dog. I hope you have a great week, and be sure to check the blog. Um, I will put the links down below, and um, have a great science week. Bye, guys.